When the Johnson boat was towed to the Magic Island by the Euclidean submarine, it appeared that all hope for the Gregory party had vanished. However, Johnson was not on board the boat, having left it secretly on the high seas and boarded another boat returning to Los Angeles. The formula which Captain Bradford had sent to Johnson by homing pigeon has been taken by G-47, and the Euclidean scientists immediately set about compounding this formula, thinking they have Captain Bradford's universal solvent. The formula is really something far different, however, and as we look into the laboratory, we see Jerry and Jones standing with G-47, the woman submarine commander, and the submarine engineer. Ah, excellent work, Commander. You have brought them just in time. The work on the captain's formula is within seconds of completion. I will take them to the confinement cells, if you wish it. No, no. I want them here. Uh, Bradford is a very clever man. It is entirely possible that he may have planned a little surprise for us at the completion of the formula. <laughs> it will be well to have two of his friends near me at that time. What do you mean, G-47? If anything unpleasant were to happen, it might lessen the captain's enjoyment to know that you too, young fools, had received a portion of the treatment. You are wanted at the table, G-47. Yes, yes. Uh, come with me, you two. Over here, quickly. Does that the stuff there? Mm, precisely. It has reached the boiling point. The process should be complete any second. Oh, yes. Quick, Jerry. I, I'm the Jerry. 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 It's a good thing we got out of there fast, Joan. <clears throat> I forgot and started to talk. And I too, Jerry. A little of the gas got in my mouth, but I think I'm quite all right now. Uh, now, we're <coughs> supposed to go and stir up all the rest of the Euclidians and try and get them to rush into that room to save G-47 and the chemist. Then they'll get some of the gas, too. We will not need to alarm anyone, Jerry. That gong has done it for us. You mean that gong will bring the others here to rescue G-47 and his scientists? Yes, Jerry. The single stroke of the gong was for laboratory number one. The five strokes for this level. Boy, then we'd better get someplace else quick, if we're going to get away at all. I do not know where to go, Jerry. We will meet other Euclidians if we use the elevator shafts. I got it, Joan. Back into that noisy room, quick. You are right, Jerry. That is the best place. <laughs> We will be safe in here, Jerry. Well, we better stick close to this door. Now, don't get out in the middle of the room where our voices make that funny hollow sound. Somebody might hear it outside. I think the sound could not leave the room, but it is best to be careful. Hey, who's ringing that alarm gong? No one. It is automatic. One of the scientists must have been able to set off the alarm before the gas overcame him. It will continue to ring at intervals until someone enters the laboratory and shuts it off. Well, from what Tex said... There'll be a lot of them enter the room before anybody wakes up to shut anything off. How long will that gas in the laboratory remain active, Jerry? Well, I don't know for sure. Tex said he couldn't tell that without knowing how big the room was and how airtight and how much of the stuff they mixed up. Then it might be safe for the others to go in there quite soon. Yeah, but what of it? Those fellows in there will sleep for hours, Tex said. The Euclidians have many wonderful antidotes and methods for reviving an unconscious person, Jerry. We may not have as much time as you planned on. I know all that, but we can't make a move till we find out about these others who'll be rushing in there now. Jerry, the gong. I didn't hear anything. That is the trouble, Jerry. What's wrong now? The gong has passed the regular interval when it should have rung automatically. Then that means that somebody got safely into that room and shut off the alarm. Yes, and that means we may have very little time to reach and warn the captain. Not only that, but we've got to get out of here before we're caught. Or our only chance to get away with this thing is to be back on the yacht, looking plenty innocent when the other Euclidians come around asking questions. Jerry, I have thought of a way. Well, dish out the thought quick. I'm no mind reader. Over there in the corner is an old elevator kept noisy for testing soundproof devices. It is never used. We can try that. Get going, then, and don't let any grass grow under your feet. Grass grow under my feet? Jerry, I oh, do not oh, understand. Oh, skip it, skip it. Take out for that corner. Go ahead, run. Show me where it is. I'll follow. Hurry up. It's this way, Jerry. Oh. If they don't hear this, they're all deaf. It cannot be heard outside this room. 
Hmm. Now we are out of the sound of Is that Jones? So I noticed. Now, where's the elevator? I will move this lever. The door will open. Boy, I sure didn't waste any soundproof paint on that. Hurry inside, Jerry. Then we will go upward. Okay, let's go. elevator, is it, Jerry? Well, it goes up. That's all I want for any elevator right now. Hey, what are we going to do when we get off this thing? What do you mean, Jerry? Well, we'll be caught sure if we try to make it across the top of the island all the way to the yacht. Those guards in the control chamber on the surface won't leave their post to answer the alarm, will they? Oh, no, Jerry. I had thought of that. We are not going to the surface. I know of a tunnel on the first level just below the surface. We will use that. And that will get us to the edge of the island without being seen? Yes, Jerry. It will bring us out at Pier 5, within a few feet of my mother's yacht. Oh, you're a peach of a girl, Joan. Oh, you're a honey. I do not understand just what I am, but I like the way you call me those names. Oh, you'll do, Joan. Hey, we stopped. Yes, this is the first level. Now I will open the door. Get out, Jerry. This is the tunnel. Boy, it's dark enough to be two tunnels. Now where? Just a moment. I will set the lever inside the car for the fifth level again. Then when I close this door, the car will automatically return to the sound channel. And no one will know we have used the elevator. We're getting better and better. Give it the gun. I got my flashlight. Is it safe to use it? Yes, quite safe. We could not use the lighting system in this tunnel. The indicators in the control chambers would show that current was being withdrawn for use here. Well, here goes the lights, then. Boy. This place is big enough to drive a truck through. That is often done, Jerry. The electric carriers run through this passageway, carrying materials from ships to the interior of the island. Okay, tell me about the wonders of the joint later. Just now, what direction is Pier 5? Directly ahead, through the tunnel. Come on, then. Let's go. What can we do after we reach the yacht, Jerry? No telling till we get there. But your mother and Captain Bradford will have some plan all worked out. But even now, the Euclidians, other than the chemists, are in the laboratory trying to revive the chemists who were stricken by the gas, turning in alarms to all parts of the island, looking in every room and passageway for evidence that someone other than the Euclidians was there. Well, we didn't leave any tracks, and nobody saw us coming out of the laboratory, so we're safe. And beside that, it was an accident anyhow. How could anyone prove the captain knew the foreigner would explode and make that sleep-producing gas? The Euclidians have ways of doing many things, Jerry. Stop! We. Oui. You didn't tell me any too soon. I just about bumped my head on that wall. The passage turns here, Jerry, and circles the island, just at the base of the piers. But we go straight ahead. Straight ahead? Through that wall? The wall has a door in it. Watch. See? Gee, another of those doors. Yes, Jerry. Into the lock at once. Another lock, huh? Yes. Now I will shut the door behind us. Can you swim underwater, Jerry? Sure, can you? Naturally. Now I will have to admit water to this lock. When it reaches your face, hold your breath. It will only be for a few seconds until the lock is full. The outer door will open automatically, and we will swim out. Ready? Let her go. Yes. Now, Jerry, when the door is open, swim straight out and up. My mother's boat should be directly in front of this door and within a few feet of it. I get the idea. The water's pretty near up to my shoulders now. You're shorter than I am, Joan. Hang on to my shoulder. I will do that, Jerry. Brace yourself so the last rush of water does not knock you from your feet. Ready here. I am ready. Say no more until we reach the surface near the yacht. Hey, Joan. Quiet, Jerry. We're right between the two boats, Johnson's and the yacht. Yes, Jerry. Swim well in between them. Until we cannot be seen from the island, we should be able to grasp the line the boats are lashed together with. Yeah, good girl, Joan. Let's go. Look here, Jerry. There is a large hole in my mother's boat, just above the water line. Yeah, one in Johnson's, too. What does that mean? Crawl in here, quick, get in Johnson's boat. Captain Bradford. Yeah, hurry up, Joan. You first. Crawl in that hole. Yeah. Come in quickly, Jerry. Coming up. Good work, kids. We heard the alarm going off at the fifth level, so we knew the formula done its work. Yeah. What's the idea of the holes in the boat, Tex? Come up into Johnson's radio cabin quick, and I'll tell you. I think we will not have much time, Captain, before the Euclidians will come here and ask questions. I know that. Here, look out for that beam. Duck your heads. 
Gosh, this boat's a lot bigger than the yacht, isn't it? Yes, nearly 40 feet longer. 20 foot on the beam. Plenty of storage space in the hold. Now, wait until I look around before you kids come up here. That is a good thought, Captain. It would excite suspicion if Jerry and I were seen returning to the boat, dripping wet as we are. Yeah, all clear now. We'll just duck through this passage into the radio cabin. Joan, my dear. Oh, Mother. I've been so worried about you. We're okay, Mrs. Gregory. Did the formula work as Tex anticipated? Exactly, Mother. Every Euclidean chemist was put to sleep by the gas at one. Have you raised him yet, Pat? No, but I've been calling almost constantly. He should answer any moment now. Who are you calling, Mrs. Gregory? Johnson. But I'm calling our station at Wilmington. Johnson will know the message is for him if he hears it. I think it is very dangerous, Mother. The guards in the control room will be sure to hear the message. That's what we want them to do. They think Johnson's a prisoner here now. And if they hear us frantically calling for help, they won't blame that gas explosion in the laboratory on us. Keep trying it, Pat. J-24Y to Wilmington. J-24Y to Wilmington. Patricia Gregory to Wilmington. Johnson arrived and captured. Captain Bradford's formula taken from Johnson and now in hands of Euclidean. Can you hear me, Wilmington? Patricia Gregory calling Wilmington.